Hello everyone, welcome to the Tatakai Tactical Battle Effects introduction video. Tatakai is a plugin which allows you to easily add high fidelity explosions and ballistics to your Unity game projects. In this first video, we're just going to go over the basic installation and explosion effects, and we'll save a more in-depth look at the rest of the system for a later video. So as you can see in my introduction scene, we have just a couple elements. We have a basic cube, and this is just your standard Unity cube prefab or primitive. Uh, we have a light in our scene, which you can see here. Uh, we have a camera, of course, and we have a ground plane. And this is, again, just the basic Unity plane primitive. So in order to get Tetakai up and running, the first thing we want to do is add the explosion module to our scene. And this explosion module needs to be in any scene where you want to run Tatakai. So uh, go into the Tatakai folder under prefabs and you'll see the explosion module. And we're just going to drag this right into our scene, like so. And you'll see a lot of uh, attributes here, but you don't really need to worry about any of those quite yet. So we have our explosion module, and we want to turn this cube into an exploding cube. And to do that, all we have to do is add one of the uh, preset explosion prefabs that ship with Tetakai. So go into presets under explosions, and uh, we're just going to pick one of these and just drag it right onto our cube. And as you can see, it's now become a child object of our cube object. And again, this has a lot of attributes, but we're not going to go over those right now. The only thing we need to know is we have a detonate function. So when we run our scene, we have our cube, and it's not doing anything. And now, if we go into the explosion object component and click on detonate, well, it detonates. So one of the other aspects of this explosion object is this die on detonation attribute. If you have this checked on, once the detonation happens, the object will be destroyed. But by checking it off, and running the scene again. Now we can detonate it. And you see the object is still there. We can detonate it again. This comes in very handy when you're testing explosions or working out custom effects. So the next component we want to look at is this detonation type. Now detonation types take in a number of variables and will decide, based on those variables, whether the explosion will detonate or not. Uh, the one we have attached here is detonation type projectile. Now, we're not actually shooting any projectiles in this video, but what it does is it'll check for a projectile hit, and then based on the detonation chance, it will detonate the object. So. If we go and play the scene, if we add a hit, oh, that one didn't detonate. But if we click enough times, it will detonate. Now, there are a number of detonation types that ship with Tatakai. Under Tatakai scripts, you'll see all these detonation types. So we can detonate via a timer. So there will be a countdown timer. And actually, let me just show you how that would work. We're going to disengage this one for right now. And we're going to add, oops, we're going to add, we're going to add timer. We'll run our scene, 
and we'll give this a delay of five seconds. And you can see it count down. And there it goes. This is useful for time bombs or anything that needs, or a grenade or anything that needs some kind of delayed detonation. Some of the other types we have here are proximity. So depending on the angle of detection that you set, if one object gets too close or crosses that angle of detection, the explosion will detonate. Projectile, if it registers a projectile hit, it will detonate. Impact, this is the object itself. If it gets hit by another object or it falls and hits the ground, it will detonate. With heat, you can designate certain temperature thresholds, either an upper threshold or a lower threshold. Once the object's temperature passes that threshold, detonation. Force, this is specifically force applied from other explosion objects. So you can have a number of these objects in close proximity. If one detonates, any other object that has a force detonation type will also initiate detonation. The arming detonation type is a little different than the other detonation types. What this does is we'll set a flag that the explosion object will require before it will initiate a, a detonation. So for example, if we play our scene, And in the explosion object, if we check the require arming attribute, now when we detonate, it doesn't do anything. What we need to do is add this arming detonation type. And you see it still doesn't detonate. But if we check is armed, now the explosion is armed and it will detonate like so. So that takes care of the detonation types. What I'd like to talk about now are the rest of these components on our explosion object. We have here action type spawn object and we have action type effect. These action types will be initiated once the detonation is initiated. So what these actually do are they drive the visuals of the explosion itself. Action type spawn object pretty much does what it says. It will spawn specific objects that you set. So here we're spawning spark objects. The next component is action type effect. And this component actually spawns the particle effects that make up the fire and smoke of the explosion system. So here you can designate a specific effect and incidentally all the particle effects are listed under effects. So as you can see we have a number of these action type effects. If we run our scene you can see what they do separately from each other. Each one will spawn a specific particle that you determine. Now, it looks a little strange when you detonate them all separately like this. But once you string them together and you detonate the entire object, it tends to look pretty impressive. Now, you can add as many of these action type components that you like. As you can see, by adding multiples, you can start to build up a very impressive looking effect from basic building blocks. So that about wraps it up for this video. We've taken a look at the basic explosion object and the various components that drive the explosion itself. We'll be taking a closer look at the rest of the Tathakai system in some upcoming videos. And if you have any questions, I've put links to both the Unity Technologies forum and the Tanuki Digital 
uh, Tetakai specific form where uh, you'll be able to contact me and ask anything you like. Again, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.